U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said at the Warsaw Summit that achieving peace and security in the Middle East requires pushing back against Iran's regional ambitions. He specifically cited Yemen, where Iran is supporting Houthi rebels, as one of the places where this has to be done. Yet even as Pompeo was making that declaration, the U.S. House of Representatives was passing a resolution to stop any military support for the Saudi-led coalition fighting the Houthis. And that is a sharp rebuke to the Trump administration's policy in Yemen. Our Washington correspondent, Shana Stulin, joining us from there. Shana, we see this great divide you have on one hand, Pompeo really touting U.S. policy. On the other hand, Congress is saying enough is enough. Does it look like this is going to pass the Senate, first of all? What's the next hurdle? Well, let's talk about what happened last night. This resolution passed the House, mostly along party lines, although 18 Republicans did vote for it. So now it's expected to head to the Senate in a couple of weeks. And here's what's interesting, Nareet. The Senate, which is led by Republicans, a couple months ago passed a similar resolution because Republicans in the Senate were so upset about the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the Saudi behavior, the cover-up, the White House response. And so this resolution is likely to pass the Senate as well. But the White House, the White House has already threatened to veto it. Despite the very likely presidential veto, lawmakers say this sends a clear message about how they feel. And it also is very clear that there is a brewing showdown between Capitol Hill and the White House over America's relationship to the Saudis. Uh, uh, clearly, uh, a lot of factors are, are, are uh, playing a part in this uh, uh, chain of the U.S. withdrawal from Syria and yet staying in Yemen, and perhaps also the uh, blowback over the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah, there are, there's a lot at play here. But listen, the, I, I do have to bring in what the White House says. First of all, they say that this resolution doesn't even technically apply to the Yemen conflict because it calls for U.S. troops to be removed. But there are no actual troops on the ground in Yemen. And frankly, the bigger picture here also is the fact that the United States believes that the Saudis are key to their agenda in the Middle East, whether we're talking about fighting ISIS or combating Iran or the Israeli policy Palestinian peace deal that's expected to roll out in a couple of months. The Saudis are key to all of that, at least according to the White House. So the, the position the White House and Mike Pompeo seems to be taking is head down, ignore lawmakers, business as usual. But we are seeing from lawmakers more and more that they are getting angry at the White House position on this. And so what next? Well, again, this is going to head to the Senate. The Senate will likely pass it. But lawmakers are not going to be quiet about how they feel. All right. And this is all in a kind Country, Yemen that is dealing with thousands of deaths from this three-year-plus war and, of course, a, a massive uh, famine. Uh, Shana Estulin in Washington, thanks very much for that. I want to take some of those issues that Shana just raised and put some questions to Dr. Fadi Ismail. He's joining us here in studio, former senior congressional staffer and a research fellow at the International Institute for Counterterror. Also with us, Henry Rome. He's an analyst on Iran and Israel at the Eurasia Group. Uh, Henry, let me just start with you. Uh, when you when you hear uh, what Shana just said, that essentially the White House policy seems to be keep her head down. We need Saudi Arabia on our side. We're going to continue that policy no matter what it takes. Uh, your take on, on that approach. Well, thanks, Nareed. It's good to be here. I, I, I think the contrast is, is actually quite striking between the attempted uh, U.S. effort in Warsaw to try to arrange unity, really, from 70-odd countries about Iran's role, destabilizing role in the Middle East, while at the same time it's pretty clear the administration does not have its own house in order, uh, given the domestic divisions in this country about Saudi Arabia's role not only in Yemen, but also, as you mentioned, uh, with the murder of Jamal Khashoggi um, and, and a number of other issues. So it, I think it was, was quite, a, uh, quite a contrast. And the, the, the U.S. will say um, that the summit in Warsaw made a lot of progress towards uniting uh, the, really the international community towards Iran. But I don't think that that was really the most important outcome uh, of the summit. And, Fadi, you worked in Congress. Uh, do you think that the Republicans in the Senate are going to challenge the president on this? And, do, and more than that, do you think they should be challenging him on this? You know, one thing I know about this horse trading that happens on Capitol Hill is that it can change within 24 hours. Uh, it is clear that the, the whole uh, the vote that happened some time ago in the Senate and currently in the House has nothing to do with Jamal Khashoggi, nothing at all. In the same exact week when he was murdered, there were several 
uh, peace activists, peace and human rights activists uh, murdered in Iran in much worse ways, and nobody even knows about it. But the U.S. So is the, not giving aid to Iran. Yeah, nah, that's it. Right. Now, so well, we're, we're actually, well, we actually, well, we actually—that's true. Uh, there is no pressure on. But the point is. Um, that's one element. The second element is Saudi Arabia has a very, very bad issue in Washington, D.C. now. Yeah, the story of Khashoggi made it, made it very public because it, the optics are horrible. Right. But for the, about four years, uh, Saudi Arabia has been in the doghouse, like we say. Ever since they try, started fighting the JCP, uh, JCPOA in, in 2015, and, uh, which was the flagship for the administration at the, t at the time. And since then, there are, um, there are some scores to settle with it. Uh, yeah, some Republicans will go against the president because of issues that have nothing to do at all, either with Yemen, nor with Saudi Arabia, nor with Iran. It's there not issues the that cholera, it's not the famine, it's not the death toll that's bothering there the There is Islamic cholera is in Africa, saying. there's cholera in, in everywhere in the world. But again, all of we're a talking about the, the, the about it. U.S. aid to Saudi Arabia in that world. By the way, I'm in favor. I'm in favor. I'm one of the people who are in favor of bringing those kinds of considerations into policy. I'm actually in minority in that way. Uh, but what we have to see here is a selectivity in which it is used. I'm all in favor, personally, yeah. but, watch, but DC doesn't work that way. DC works because it, now all of a sudden they are, you know, I'm old enough to know a movie called Casablanca. There's a, in, in, a, a scene there where the police chief is, is in shock that there's a casino going on while he is stuffing his pockets with the winnings. Look, uh, this is all, there are issues in Washington DC that are domestic American policy, politics issues. The president is under attack from every angle. Some of it is his own making, you have to say it honestly. And uh, this is yet another way to uh, punch, it, uh, punch him. He will continue to help the Saudis. Congress cannot stop it right now. And uh, frankly, stopping that means helping Iran. And there's a point where the public will get it that we are actually helping well, Iran.